Welcome to Pierce the Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando, and we're here for another Monday mini sode. That's right. Our Monday minis are where we get an opportunity uh, to dive into something a little bit uh, more in depth, but for a short amount of time, if that makes sense. So typically our podcasts are an hour long plus every Wednesday, anywhere you can get podcasts and on YouTube. But our Monday minis are YouTube exclusives. This one, however, if you're listening on the podcast and you're wondering why we dropped something short here on a Monday, uh, it's because this week on Wednesday, so uh, what's the date here? The 6th? No, uh, the 8th. The 8th we're going. The 8th. Yeah, so we are going to be going live on YouTube. So we will be dropping the podcast um, shortly after we're live. Uh, but if we wanted to give everybody a heads up, if you're a, a podcast only listener and you're interested in coming on over to our live on on the 8th, uh, we're going to be going live at, uh, what do we say, 445 Pacific Standard Time? Correct, 445 Pacific Standard Time. All right, yeah. So, and if you're uh, Central Time, like, uh, like I am, that is... Uh, going to be 645 and you can do the math if you're on the East Coast. So uh, today we are talking about uh, how sell-through rate isn't always enough, right? We've talked about sell-through rate being kind of king recently, uh, that there were a lot of things we used to look at when it came to uh, sourcing items, uh, when, whether or not you know you should be, those are the niches that you should be in. Uh, but today we're kind of looking at the fact that sell-through rate isn't the only thing you should be considering. And sometimes there's other things we need to be looking at as well. Yeah. And the only reason this came up is I, I find that right now there's a lot of people introducing this, like it's a new idea, sell-through rate, and it's been around for a while. Uh, but if, in case you don't know, it's, you know, are there more items being sold than items being listed, right? And the higher of the items being sold in comparison to those listed, the more chances of your items selling. But and we actually talked to uh, somebody from Terrapeak and they gave us they gave us a time frame, right? That they kind of look through as whether or not something is what oh, they consider sell through. Uh, I can't remember the exact number, but I think it was what, like two weeks, like an item listed and sold within a certain number of weeks, whether or not they consider it in, in the sell through rate at, for Terrapeak. Wow. I'm so glad you brought that up. That wasn't even our notes. Yes. That was from Terrapeak directly telling us that. So yeah, be aware that they had let us know that. You know, it's not the 90 days, right? It, it's within, yeah, I think it was it was 30 days, I think. It was 30 days. It wasn't 90 days. So a lot of people are looking at sell-through rate of 90 days, and they're like, hey, why isn't my item selling? I thought the sell-through rate was great. And I think there's more reasons than just the sell-through rate. So the first one, before anything, is if you're going to source something, you got to make sure you understand, are you going to list that item, right? That's before anything. You might have a great sell-through rate, but if it's going to be something that you're just going to pick up and it's going to stay in your death pile by the time you list it, that sell through rate may be done. It may not be a big deal anymore. So make sure you're definitely checking out, you know, is this VCR something I'm going to clean up? I'm going to test. And we say this all the time, but I want people to understand that because if you're new, you're going to get really excited about sell through rate. You might find something that there's, you know, 50 listed and there's 100 sold. And you're like, wow, that's an amazing sell through rate. And then you don't list it. And then, you know, two months later, you find it and you're like, oh, I'm going to list it now. And the sell-through rate ended because, you know, whatever, it fell off. Mark, you got saturated. And uh, it's something you need to make sure you're listing in order for that sell-through rate number to work for you. Yeah, that, yeah, that's good. Especially for those of us who can can be, I don't want to use the word lazy, but uh, maybe just not as, not as uh, on it with certain items. And we all have those items that we get excited about, but then we don't ever list because we're not really excited about them. We're excited about the potential profit we're yeah. going to get from them. Um, the next one is, are the margins too tight for you? And and again, this is just good business practice. But a lot of times, the one end of the the pendulum people can be on, one one side of the spectrum, is that they are just looking at the the number value. Like, oh, I could pick this up for a dollar and it sells for $100. That's a great return on investment. But again, if there's zero sell-through rate, then you're, you're never actually going to see that $100. The other end of the spectrum is, wow, look, these things are selling like hotcakes. If I buy this today, it's going to sell before I, I get home. Um, but if I'm paying $10 for it and it's going to sell for 12 and then by the time, you know what I mean? Like if those margins are just so slim, if, if your total profit is going to be very, very small, it might not be worth it unless you can source a ton of them. And even then you run into the issues of one or two, uh, one or two returns or, you know, something gets broken 
could be super detrimental to your business and that total profit that you're making. So you got to be careful not going to one end of the spectrum or the other as far as the the return on investment versus sell through rate. You kind of want to find that sweet spot. Yeah, and the other thing too is is it seasonal and is it trending? Right? It might have a great sell through rate now, but it may only have a sell through rate for maybe 30 days. Right? It may be only good for a week. And that's something you got to be, especially with high, hot items, you got to be careful with that. But sometimes it's not even hot items. Sometimes it's, you know, for example, and I hate using this example, but a person passes away. Okay. The, the sell through rate on that, the moment that person passes away is going to be incredible. Most of the time, it, things fly. But then give it four or five days and you're outsourcing, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember this person. Like, you got to be careful because that sell through rate was only good for that moment in time. And by the time, you know, you end up sourcing it and you list it, it may, it may not sell anymore. Or let's say it's, you know, something that's related to a movie release or it's related to a trend on TikTok. Like trends change pretty fast. So, you know, you, at the time you may look at sell through rate, but you got to kind of, you know, think ahead and go, okay, do I really think this trend is going to last for this long? And if it is, you need to have a good reason as to why, if you're going to source that item. So. Definitely make sure it's seasonal too. You know, it, during Christmas, during Q4, some things will fly and, and sell really well. Uh, but the sell through rate, you know, when it comes to January, February, may fall off a cliff. So, you know, check Terra Peak. Make sure, you know, you see if it's something that every year sells. Make sure to check if it's just a seasonal item or is it something that has a strong sell through rate all the time uh, throughout the entire year. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the Terra Peak on that one too, because uh, yeah, seasonal. You want to look at recent sales and not just sell through rate. Because yeah, even if you're looking at 30 days, it, there's a difference between sales from if most of those sales came from three weeks ago in the last 30 days versus you know if most of those sales have come in the last two days. That might tell you okay, this is still really hot. I can move on it now. Uh, versus if there's wow, like a hundred of these sold or a thousand of these sold, but 90% of those that sold, sold three weeks ago, and almost none have sold in the last week. That tells you that trend could be dying. And again, seasonal, looking at, at Terra Peak, now Terra Peak goes back three years, you're gonna get a bet, much better picture of, yeah, once January rolls around this item tanks, which again, if you're willing to hold on to it, that that spike might come again, uh, but you gotta just be thinking about that. Um, and kind of going along, even with that first one that we talked about with, will you list it, and sometimes, uh, sometimes you got to consider shipping uh, the the not only the margins, the cost of shipping, but the time, the energy, the supplies it's going to require. There have been a handful of items that I've been able to pick up uh, or had the potential of picking up in, in large quantities. But even if the margins are decent, if it's like, man, each one of these is going to require a Franken box. Because the, even if I bought like a the bo perfect box that would fit this item, uh, there's still going to have to be like I have to float it. So I'm going to need you got to kind of consider all of the aspects that are involved in not just the sourcing or the listing, but all the way to the delivery of the customer. Because until that customer has the item and is not returning that item, you haven't really realized that profit. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And, and the other side is to is sometimes, and, and I'm going get to in, get into using WorthPoint and so on, is sometimes things have a bad sell-through rate because people are maybe, you know, doing, you know, they're charging shipping on the item. And maybe if you did a free shipping, you might sell it faster. Just something to think about. Now, the other thing I've noticed is right now that I'm doing a lot more vintage, a lot more of uh, antique items and so on, is that people use the wrong keywords or they can use the wrong category. So this is the inverse of what we're talking about, where the sell through rate may be bad, but maybe the sell through rate is bad because people don't know what they're doing when they're listing, right? They may, you know, accentuate or they may focus on the wrong pictures of an item that someone's looking for. Or maybe, you know, they're putting the wrong keywords. And maybe if you just put, you know, the right word, like maybe you put Hawaiian, or maybe if you, you know, I don't know, whatever it is, whatever keyword it is it would probably sell faster. So what you need to do, for example, I just did this with some items I picked up. Um, I, I went to WorthPoint and on WorthPoint, I noticed that there hadn't been a sale of this for over a year, but the keywords that were being used were entirely different than what people were using. People that were picking up this item, and I can't share the item at the moment, but people that were picking up this item, like they, they were just going off face of what it looked like. But there were certain things that were attached to this item 
that you wouldn't know unless you went on worth point or unless you picked up a newspaper article and then you found out what it really was you use keywords and the people that are doing safe searches or looking for this collectible item they're gonna find it and so i i found that you know using worth point uh, allowed me to see more data and even if you don't can't afford worth point you can go to therapy if you own a store and you go go back three years and i think you don't even have to own a store to use therapy anymore i could be wrong you can correct me in the comments uh but you can take a look and go okay this doesn't have a great sell-through rate not because it doesn't sell it's just because people put the wrong keywords or people ended up maybe putting in the wrong category it was something that was let's say baseball collectible and they put it under shirts right where people that are specifically looking for a certain niche like they wouldn't find it because it's in the wrong wrong category so you know take a look at those things too when you're sourcing items so hopefully this uh short mini sode uh, allowed you to see that hey sell through rate is not enough there's a few other factors that need to play a role and i do think this is part of you know growing as a reseller becoming more and a more advanced seller and, and recognizing that hey sell through is great but there's a lot of other factors that also play a role whether my item will sell with that being said make sure to be real and be relevant and be reselling peace peace